God, I thank you for what you're going to do. God, we move ourselves out of the way for your presence to have your way. Speak Holy Spirit. Say whatever you want. Use him as you feel. For he is your vessel. And this house is yours for habitation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Well, Mama, I can give a benediction because she just gave my whole message. And I guess we can go home. This will be the earliest service we've ever had. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for our prayers for the people father i ask that you have your way in this moment holy spirit have your way for even though i don't know what to say but the word said i don't have to know what to say for you will give me the words to say when i stand in front of the people so i thank you for having your way in this place i thank you for allowing it to lead into your word through the prayer that came before now I thank you for the cry and the plea that came before now. For you know what you're doing. And I'm very grateful and thankful. And all these things I ask of you in your son Jesus name. Amen. So as always. Because I normally have a disclaimer. So my disclaimer this morning was for mama and mama walls. I today I know it's first Sunday and I came out with the J's and the jeans and the football shirt over the dress shirt my disclaimer was I'm sorry but this is what I saw when I was given this message because I'm usually dressed at least on first Sunday So, my wife was talking about strength and not doing it in your own way and allowing God to have his way. The title of our message today is, Where's the Strength and Protection in Your Line? The subtitle is, Unmasking the illusion of control. I got my balcony, people. <laughs> Where is the strength and protection on your line? Unmasking the illusion of control. Anton, go ahead and show the thumbnail for those that are watching online. I kind of want you to see the thumbnail. And I told my wife, she was looking at me when I got dressed this morning. She was like, mm -mm. take that shirt off. And I was like, I can't take this shirt off. And she saw me again and she was like, you don't even really wear that shirt out of the house no more. So take that shirt off. At first, I thought she was hating because she's a Falcons fan. And I thought she was having, you know, Patriot Falcons flashbacks. Whatever. And the only thing I can keep telling family and friends who called me at halftime, cuz, and they just jumped down my throat and told me how bad we was. I, I kept telling them that day, you can cut the music off, Anton. I told them that day, hey, check this out. Call me when it's the fourth quarter and the time says zero, zero, zero.
What I found to be interesting is when the Super Bowl game was over, everybody who called me would not answer my phone call. Uh. Bad when you do things in your own strength. <laughs> so, my wife kept looking at me. And she kept saying, you need to take that shirt off. You look funny. It's funny because her and my daughter gave me a word about three weeks ago that I'm going to stand up here and look foolish for the Lord. So I guess today was the first time I was supposed to go ahead and look foolish. I'm cool with it. Moving in your own strength. The Holy Spirit gave me this analogy and he allowed me to see the life of a friend. His name is Anthony. Y'all all know Anthony. I talk about him periodically here. It's okay. He gives me the okay to bash him on the pulpit. Um, And I got this analogy, but before I give my analogy, before I go off the rocker, I want to take y'all to Jeremiah chapter 17. Because I don't want them to say I didn't give y'all no scripture today. I don't want to be that I don't want to be that pastor. You good? I don't want to be that pastor who they say he didn't give. He talked for a whole 45 minutes and then give not one set of scripture. Jeremiah 17. Ah. And I'm going to start with verse five. It says, thus says the Lord, curse be the man that trusts in man. What a bad way to start off a conversation. This is not Jeremiah speaking. This is the Lord speaking. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make your flesh his arm and whose heart depart from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good come, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. That's a bad place to be. Verse seven. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope. The Lord is for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat come, but her leaf shall be green and it shall not be careful in the year of drought or it shall not be anxious in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit hmm. even in the drought you should still yield fruit cursed is the man who will put his trust in man Cur blessed is the man who put his trust in the Lord a lot of the times when we put our trust in man we typically sometimes put our trust in ourselves and we decide that we want to move in our own strength 
we feel like we have control over every situation. Or we feel that we should have control over every situation. We should dominate every situation. So in my thumbnail, I have three goats, as they call them. Goat number one, I call him the runner. His name is Mike Vick, Michael Vick. One of the, the first top highest paid quarterback ever in the NFL. hundred million. It's never heard of, ever. I call him the runner. The second GOAT, well, he's considered the greatest quarterback to ever play. Six-time Super Bowl champion. I call him the pocket sitter. His name is Tom Brady. I told you to trust me. Just bear with me. Walk with me. The last one is an up and coming great. Three Super Bowls out of five appearances. First time appeared in the Super Bowl as a rookie. Matter of fact, I saw him at the last Super Bowl this year come back and win, and I was just amazed. And that would be Patrick Mahoney. I couldn't think of nothing to call him, so I just left it as oh so delicious. So why do I have these men as a representation today? Because the analogy that the Holy Spirit gave me is about my friend and about a lot of people is that in life, we're placed in a quarterback position. Usually the quarterback is the lead position, or it is the lead position on offense. Most quarterbacks already have a playlist on his arm, or he take cues from the coach, or from the Plays coming from upstairs. And then I saw the football team different. It's God being the owner. Jesus being the GM. Because the GM picked the places and picked pieces and put people around you and build the team to be set around you because you can't do nothing that God has given you without the people that supposed to be strategically placed in your life. Then I call the coach, the Holy Spirit, because that's the one who's calling the plays from upstairs. Just as I've said before, the Holy Spirit is your greatest prophet. You never have to run to a prophet to get a word because if you have the Holy Spirit in you, Jesus said he will only speak He will lead you always back to me, but he will only speak what the father has to say, which means that when the coach is speaking, you're getting it directly from the owner. It's coming straight from the throne. You don't have to second guess it. All you got to do is just follow the play. Now, a lot of us play one of these three roles either we're a runner we're a pocket sitter or you're like my man Patrick he does a little bit of both Brady was never a runner I love him I got his number on my chest today but he was never a runner Mike Vick was a great passer he just never had somebody to throw to so he became a runner. But Pat had both. Someone to throw to and in need he would run. But a lot of us are like Mike Vick. 
And what do I mean? They call height. We get the ball. We know the play. Sometimes we've been told to play. It's a pass play. But we don't trust the person who we're throwing the ball to because we don't trust the play from the coach. We don't trust the people that has been strategically drafted to be around us. So what do we do? We panic. Fear sets in. Because he has a quarterback, I played this position. I started in this position. You have a pocket that you sit in. They give you three steps back. As soon as you get it, it's one, two, three. You are here. You're looking. You're seeing. You're surveying. What a quarterback is supposed to also do? You're supposed to know your enemy. Some of us don't take note and don't go to class because doing practice, we supposed to go to film practice. But we sit back and we watch the team that we about to play. So I'm supposed to study my opponent. So if I'm playing against the Falcons, I'm about to sit here and I'm about to watch your defense as a quarterback. I'm about to sit here and be like, oh, that's a nickel. That's a dime. They running a man. They doing this. They do this on the first down. They do this on the second down. They do this on third and long. They do this on second and short. So I'm paying attention to how the enemy moves wherever I'm positioned in life. <laughs> That's so when I step up back to the line, I know I got to play. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will say call an audible because I can see that you prepare for my second and short or you have prepared for my run game because you have studied my plays. And the enemy that we deal with, he has not only studied our plays, he has studied our generation. He has studied our family. He knows where there's a small little thread that he can just pull on. To take you out your game. Come on, sir. So my job is to read the defense, see what's taking place, and be able to stay in the pocket. Now the pocket is protection. That is my protection. Hmm. A lot of us forget. Because we don't know that God said, I'll be the protector. I'll be with you wherever you go. You don't have to worry. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be there when you cry. Sometimes you're going to take a hit, but I'm still going to be right there. The problem is, once we say height and the protection comes, when the line backs up and puts you in the pocket, you see the enemies from the outside. You see them moving. As a quarterback, if it's a pass play, my job is to step back, look, and step into the protection. What I realize a lot of us do is we step into the protection, but we get afraid. We allow the enemy to throw us off. So what do we do? We move in our own strength. We cross the line of scrimmage. Now, when I cross this line of scrimmage, I can't go back. I can't go back. And once I cross this line, I can't throw the ball. Now I got to run. And a lot of us are running. We're running out of fear. 
we're running out of lack of faith. We're running because we're anxious. We're running because we're not patient. We haven't even allowed the play to even produce itself to even see where it's going. But we just start running. And when we cross that line of scrimmage, we are out of protection. There is no help. And now you're moving in your own strength. And if you don't know how to run, you're going to get hit. Then you wonder why your finances is bad. Why there's discourse in your house. Why you got problems with family. Why is there issues with the children? What's going on on the job? Why is this person constantly keep getting on my nerves? Because you are constantly moving in your own strength and you are out of the place of protection. A lot of the times you get talked across the line of scrimmage. It happened to Eve. She got talked out of her place of protection. Garden means a place of protection. Eden means a place of provision, paradise, and abundance. So she was in a place of protection with provision and abundance. But she stepped out of the pocket. And she crossed the line of scrimmage. And it would have been good. But Adam followed suit. And when he crossed the line of scrimmage, everything came out of bounds. A lot of us are runners. Proverbs 28, 26 says, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. So not only are you considered a fool, you also got a curse on you. But it said, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Sometimes we cross the line of scrimmage because we think it's the right thing to do. But then Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seemed right to a man. But in his end is a way to death. Coming out of your protection, coming out of your faith, coming out of your trusting. Understand you're taking on strength that's not yours. The only fight the Bible told you to fight. Is the good fight of faith. What I find to be interesting is we decide to cross the line of scrimmage because now we want to play God and we want to fight the battles that's not meant for me to be fighting. My fight is to keep my faith in what he told me in his promises in the fact that if I take two steps back and if I move into this pocket, I'm still going to be protected. Now, you do have the pocket sitter, Mr. Brady. The reason why I call Tom Brady the pocket sitter is because Tom Brady was sitting in the pocket for 10 seconds. It's like This is like never heard of. It's like this man can make a phone call, order pizza, eat a slice, and still have time to throw the ball. I don't understand it. But this is where it comes where you put your trust in what has been built around you. You keep your faith in the moving pieces. And you stick to the play. Regardless of what the outcome is. Now sometimes there's problems with pocket sitters. 
because sometimes a pocket sitter feel like they in control because they are in a certain place of protection. Some pocket sitters feel like they can't be touched because they are in the pocket and then they get complacent and then sometimes we get a little big for our britches because we, I got time. I get the ball, I take two steps back and I can sit there and be like, no, go that way. No, 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 go back that way. No, stop. So some pocket sitters sometimes get comfortable because life becomes good in that place of protection. So cuz I just ain't going to go to church this Sunday. I'm good. I know I said I was going to pray at 8 o'clock on every Thursday, but I'm going to skip this one. Oh, I was going to do this. Oh, well, I might change my mind on that because I'm protected. Why? Because... I live by the word. I'm living good. But see, there comes some strings of being a pocket sitter. Sometimes when you sit in the pocket, the enemy going to blitz you and still hit you. Most pocket sitters don't know how to run. So they just take hits. Because they looking for the protection. But sometimes they leave a breach in the line. Don't think that because you sitting good that the enemy not coming. Now, if you're a good pocket sitter and ain't no enemy coming, then my question is, is your protection pocket from the Lord or is your protection pocket from the devil? Because, see, I ain't got to come at you. I'll let you go to church. You ain't moving in no power anyway. You don't pray. You don't read your word. You leave service and go home and smoke big blunts. You're not a threat to me. So I will let you sit in the pocket. You go home and lay with a man that's not your husband. You lay with a woman that's not your wife. I'll let you sit in the pocket. I don't have to worry about you. One, you're going to sit in your sin. Two, you can't even throw. So, I you ain't got no receivers. You ain't got nobody to pass to. You ain't take. You not listening to the coach. So I ain't really worrying about you. But this is what you do. You move your line of scrimmage to allow me to come into your life. So even though you sitting in the pocket, I still get to hit you. I still get to wreak havoc in your life. And the first thing you would say is, this this Christian thing does not work. (laughs) He told me, ooh, come taste and see. And I tasted it. And it was good, but I don't know what happened. It don't work. Because I keep getting hit. The enemy keep blitzing me every time he comes in here. Every time I put my hand on this ball, I'm getting up off this turf. My body is taking a beating. Because God didn't allow the devil to do it to you. You gave the devil the keys to your front door. Come on, sir. You said, hey, listen, 
The playbook that we run in this Sunday is upstairs. When you get upstairs, go to the first door on your left. That's my office. I left the playbook there. Go ahead and read it. And it's got quarter by quarter, play by play of what I'm going to do. And I'll let you in. Because now I just get to sit in the pocket. And because I'm not paying attention to the coach, I'm not calling the plays. I feel like I'm in control. I run this thing because the house is good. The lights is paid. I got food. The wife is happy. I'm good. I'm in control. Not knowing I'm setting myself up for failure. Because I don't listen to the coach. Because I don't pray. Because I don't spend time in the word. Oh, Lord, if it be thy will. Well, if you pick up my book, you will know what my will is. Stop praying if it be thy will, because that just opens the line of scrimmage for you to just get knocked down. Because my will is spelled out from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, I think 21. What I want for you, what I got for you, what I got planned for you, how this game is supposed to go. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be taking hits like this because the game is rigged for you to win. You losing, sitting in the pocket with great protection and still losing the game that's rigged for you to win. You are already up by 100 points. It's 100 to nothing. You're winning, but you're losing. You go five yards down, you get a flag and have to go 15 yards back. You move up 10 yards, then you got to go 15 yards back. How you lose a game that's rigged for you to win? You already got the victory. You should be walking around with the ring on, holding up the trophy. You shouldn't have no problems. Because you can be like God's the peppy. I'm under the king. I'm great. And sometimes you can be doing what you're supposed to do. You could be praying. You could have your secret place. You can be in your word. But the enemy will still come and hit you while you're sitting in the pocket. Come on, sir. The thing about those who pray and stay in their word, when they're still in the pocket, the pocket just collapsed. They not really taking hard hits. You're still protected. You just go down real quick. You gonna catch that blitz coming from the outside. You gonna get hit. Even in the pocket. But you take that as a learning curve, as a stepping step, a uh, stepping stool, and you you take it to prayer and say, "I didn't see that, Coach. What happened? Oh, well, A, B, C, D. Oh, okay. How can I not take that blind hit again? Well." You got to let Jody go. Wait, 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 wait. No, the GM has called and said, this needs to be moved. You took that blind hit in the pocket because you need to let that go. You need to give this up. You need to leave this person alone. Hey, leave that job. Go to this one. Do you trust me while you standing in the pocket calling the plays for you? Come on, sir. I know you are the face of the city. 
But are you going to listen to me when I'm calling the plays, when I tell you, hey, you're going to have to pull him out the game because he is holding you back. He is the reason why the enemy is still coming in. You need to get rid of this receiver and go get this one. You need to bench this one. You need to fire that one. But that's my brother. Great. But they ain't got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Because you're going to have to let family go, friends go. Because sometimes this walk in the pocket and you standing in the pocket, sometimes it's alone in the pocket. By yourself. It's like that. It's like a scene in a movie where you hear everybody screaming and then ain't nobody there. The only person standing on the field is you. Sometimes just walk with God feel like that. Family going to turn against you. Jesus said, I came not to bring peace, but with a sword to divide. I'm going to divide mama against daughter, daddy against son, mother-in-law against this in-law, brother against sister. Why? Because you chose to follow me. And when you truly accept my salvation, when you truly stand in this pocket for me, the people that you thought that was supposed to protect you, your line of protection, your offensive line, they leave, they gone. <laughs> they bring, they wreak havoc. So now since they leaving and they gone, are you going to go be a runner or are you still going to be the pocket sitter? Are you going to trust me to stay in the pocket as we formulate the play? You might not make it to the playoffs this year because I needed to build you up. I needed to restructure your team. I need to move things out of your way. I need to get you a new coach. I need to get you new players. But what you went through last year, I need for you to remember because that is the learning to help you understand how to navigate this year. So you can stop stepping across the line of scrimmage in your own strength. Because once you cross this line, you're pretty much out there by yourself. I didn't put you out the garden. You put yourself out the garden. How you put yourself out the garden? By not listening. By not paying attention. By not knowing where you're supposed to be on the field. False starting. Running to go do something that I didn't tell you. Yeah, I sent the word to say you're going to do this, but it wasn't supposed to be tomorrow. And the reason why it failed is because I, you didn't give me time to prepare you and prep you to get your character right, to get your mind right, to get your heart right, to remove all of these things from you. Because Jesus made it clear. He said, my father is the vine dresser. I love the King James Version. He said, my father is the husband, man. The word husband is where you get the word gardener. Well, you get husband from gardener. The husband's job is to prune, to plant, to till, to cultivate, to raise up, to find what is on the inside, pull it out, to knock things off. He said that I will purge you so you can produce more fruit. So if you don't allow me to purge you while you in the pocket taking these hits to see who is letting folks in. Because Jesus is sitting up in the box, in the GM box, looking down on the field saying, hey, number 69 ain't blocking. So you might have to remove 69 out your life. Mm -hmm. Number 68 is not protecting you like he said. He don't love you like he said. <laughs> he 
He not taking the responsibility as he's supposed to. So if a man, if he's not willing to hold on to his responsibility and he's not willing to do what he was supposed to do, why are you still holding on to it? Because now you've put more trust in what you're holding on to than the one who you're supposed to find strength in in, in the begin with. Yes, sir. Lastly, oh, so delicious. Because I ain't know what to call them. I, I wanted to say both, but now I was like, that look like it'll be tacky. I watched this man go into overtime in this past Super Bowl. Me and my daughter sat on these two couches. Well, what I find to be interesting is we wanted the other team to win. He had already won two back to back. And I was just cheering for the other little team because it was like, hey, you know, I wanted to see, you know, the little quarterback. He in his, I think it was his first or second year. And I was like, that'd be great to see him move up. It'd be great to see the coach win because of his trial and tribulation, his testimony, how he got to coach this team, how he brought a losing team who nobody ever talks about no more to the Super Bowl. It was a great Cinderella story. I was like, great. They go in the OT. And the reason why they went in the OT is because the team I was cheering for, they kept getting penalty after penalty after penalty. A lot of us are not moving in life where we're supposed to because we keep penalizing. And we keep getting pushed back and pushed back. And no matter how far you try to move forward, if you catch this penalty, you're going backwards. If you're not in a word, you're going backwards. If you're saying that you're a Christian, but you're not walking this walk, I don't even like the C word no more. Because eventually we're going to be separated. It's going to be Christians on one side and believers on the other. Let me tell you what that looked like. Go read Matthew 25. All the believers is going to be sheep on the right side. All Christians are going to be goats on the left side. It didn't pan out too well for the goats. For the Christians. Because they just like the word. You catch penalties because you don't teach the word. You're being taught a denomination. Oh, well, we don't do that here. This is what we do. I don't really care what you do. I care about what this say. Because what you do going to land me on the goat side. And he said it's hot on that side. It's everlasting heat on that side. I'm going to burn on that side. There's going to be a lot of whining and crying and screaming and yeah if you ever grind your teeth just multiply that by a million so you can be a Christian all you want to because a lot of them are walking that wide road it's good to be a believer a believer hears and do the word But back to my guy, Mr. Patrick. They go into overtime. Thought the other team was going to score. It's like, yo, they're going to get it. (laughs) And what people fail to realize is. No, she right there. Even Even though Patrick Mahone know how to be a pocket sitter. Sometimes God will design a play for you to be a runner. What I find to be very interesting is sometimes God will allow 
for it to look like all the odds are stacked against you. And he does that not to hurt you or to harm you. 1 Corinthians 10 says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. So every temptation in this world is common. It was even common to Christ himself. It said, but God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. That means that you will be tempted with something, but it will not come to you to the point where it will destroy you. It said, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure. They drew up a play that I find to be very interesting. Because this man sat in the pocket all four quarters. People was concerned of why he wasn't running. Now, they have seen this man do some amazing things. This man is a righty. But he will run and dive and slide and still throw the ball at the same time and make a play. He is incredible. He is like, I hate to say this in church, no homo, but it would be like Michael Vick and Tom Brady having a baby. That would be Patrick Mahon. Quick, fast, know how to read. He can see. He understands. He knows football. He can read defense. He's listening to the coach. He's paying attention. He sits in the pocket when need to be. But they got a play that they put together. And when they put this play together, when you watch it in slow motion, there has to be a trust factor. I have to trust my coach because he's calling his play when he's calling. We all the way on the other end of the field. Usually we gonna throw this thing because we need to get downfield. And we ain't really got that much time because we in overtime. And whoever scores first, that's who wins the game. Well, no, they change the rules. They give both teams an opportunity to score. What I find to be interesting about this play was God knows how to make a way of escape by shifting the enemy into his own demise. What do I mean by that? He went to Job. There was a conversation had in heaven. Listen, I'll make Job curse you to your face. Now, everybody talk about Job, but nobody pays attention to the fact that Satan still has access to the throne room. Your adversary still can get into heaven and talk to your owner. He can still sit at the table across from your GM. He still got goblins, goons, and problems surrounding your coach because he's the God of this world. We talk about Job, what happened, how he overcame, he's victorious. But anybody ever pay attention? This man walked right in with the angels. And God was like, hey, what's happening? What's happening? What you doing? <laughs> Run around here, you know, just doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how I get down. You made me. <laughs> you know, blowing up stuff. You know. You ever thought about my servant, Joe? I have. You know, but... He in your strength. He in your protection. He in the pocket. If you have.
have one lineman just move to the side so I can just slide right on in, I'll make them curse you to your face. Really? I'm up for that bet. Now, me and my wife had a discussion about this verse. The Bible says God never tempts you with evil. In order for you to be tempted by evil, that means it's already on the inside of you. It's that man is led away by his own lust and entice. Entice means that if you decide to cheat on your wife, it was already on the inside. He just brought the lust up to the surface. But it was already there. But well, God made me do it. Nah. Well, he let him tempt me. No, 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 no. He already knew it was there. The thing is, he just won't let you be tempted to where it will kill you. So he will give you a way of escape. He gave Job a way of escape. That way of escape was the fact that Job never budged off the promises. It's funny because Job never talked about the law, but he knew the promises. Job never mentioned the Ten Commandments, but he knew the promises. Job knew the game was already rigged in his favor because when his wife was like, listen, bro, check this out. I, we just lost our children. We just lost the house, the car. We had $8.2 billion in the bank. Bruh, I can't even go buy milk. Curse this man so we can just... My, I love Joe responds. He asked her, was she stupid? He used my favorite question. Are you slow, dumb, stupid, or retarded? Which one? That's my favorite question. That's how I, tra that's the Anthony translation. It's not in the Bible. He asked her, was she foolish? But I like, because foolish means you're stupid in a nice way. But I, to me, he asked that question. Are you slow, dumb, stupid, or retarded? So what you're trying to tell me is God going to make it happen, but he can't take it away? Because we are so comfortable being in the pocket and protected. When the things start to stack up against us, we forget the promises. Mama got sick. Oh, Lord Jesus. But his promise is she can have divine health. Y'all praying for healing. He says she can have divine health where she will never catch a headache again a day in her life. These are the promises. I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. You ain't, you're not supposed to be in protection and poor. It's impossible. When God said, I'm a God of abundance. God had two people in a garden. But he, the oceans ain't went nowhere. So who's going to drink all that water between the two of them? Think about it. That's how he wants your life to be. But you have to be in the pocket. Even when it looked like everything is stacked against you. Mm -hmm. Come on, Curtis. Patrick Mahoney was feeling like everything was stacking against him. And I saw them run a play. And when they said it to him, he stopped. And he looked. And he walked back over. It was like he was getting clarification. And the coach was like, yeah. He looking at, bro, we still got s almost 70 yards to go. You call this play. But I trust you. I trust the upstairs. I want to make the owner proud. I trust you. Which means now I have to trust 
everybody on the field to do their part. Oh, I love this play. As soon as he called height, the guard moved and went this way. Usually when a guard moves, whether it's the right guard or the left guard, when they move, that means somebody's running the ball. What I liked about this design play was they had two backs in the backfield. That's unusual to move a guard when you got two backs because the back in the front is usually going to block for the one in the back. But to see the guard move as if it was one back and go this way, the one in the front picked up his slack. The second back ran behind the guard. The guard went through to open the lane for the back. The problem was he never gave the running back the ball. He turned in the pocket. One route receiver was going all the way down the field. So he can pull the safety out this way. The other receiver was going in and he cut straight across the middle so he can pull all defense this way. So when Mahone rolled out, God left the provision wide open. He shot right through the hole. Pew! Now when God designed something for you, he already had provisions down the field for you. The line can't move down the field on a pass play. But they can move down the field on a run play. The thing was, usually God has angels assigned to you. Their job is to minister to you, meaning that their job is to serve you. So God will send them before you to make a open, to make a way. You need finances for that business? Tell him to go get it for you. That's his job. You, you, <laughs> you need your child to come home, tell the angel to go get him. That's his job. And by the time my home came around the corner, everything was lined up for his protection downfield. One, the defense already went this way. He going this way. It happened so quick, you have to watch it in slow motion to see it play out piece by piece. He went this way. Gone. Almost 45 yards downfield. Benito finish. You got a blocker already here. So when he knock his man down, so when the angel that's supposed to protect you knock down this enemy, he's coming to catch up to you to knock down the other enemy. And then now you still have the lineman and the running back already downfield in front of you knocking down your enemy. Because God now designed for you to cross the scrimmage line in his strength, not your strength. You were now able to run because God designed the play because it was his call, not, oh, man, I don't see nobody. Christina, where you at? I don't know. So let me just take off running in my own strength. No, the play was designed for me to be protected in his strength to get downfield. Then he does one of them crazy plays where he trips, falls, and still throw the ball. Touchdown. Game was over. That was it. A lot of people say, you know, when you speak of, a lot of pastors use Old Testament scripture so they can beat up on their congregation. I get to use the law against you. So guess what? I guess I go ahead and beat up on you really quick. Um, this one is New Testament. 
Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through him who. Uh, Isaiah 41 10. Fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 40 and 31. Am I really beating up on y'all? Okay, great. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Psalms. 73 26 my flesh and my heart may fail but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever first Chronicles 16 and 11 seek the Lord and his strength seek his presence continually Deuteronomy 31 and 6 be strong and courageous do not fear or be in dread of them for it is the Lord your God who goes with you he will not leave you or forsake you Habakkuk 3 and 19 God the Lord is my strength he makes my feet like the deers he makes me tread on the on my high places second Timothy 1 and 7 for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. Exodus 15 and 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. This is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases his strength. That's Isaiah 40, 29. And I can go on and on and on and on and on. The Old Testament is not to beat you. The Old Testament is to give you clarity of the new covenant. Of the New Testament. He hasn't changed. Running out in your own strength. You'll get tired. You'll pass out. Ask my friend Anthony. He felt like, come on, Anton. My friend Anthony said that he kept crossing the line of scrimmage. He was trying to get money in his own strength. He was trying to run his business in his own strength. He was trying to do everything that God told him to do in his own strength. What I find to be interesting, I said, Anthony, didn't you tell me before you got married, you said that your wife, you said that your sister-in-law, God bless her soul, told you and your wife that before you do anything, you should seek the Lord first before you do it so you can receive the instruction and his strength. How many times have you done that, Anthony? It got real quiet. I said, this is how you lose the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter. Calling the wrong play. Not seeking the instructions. This is how you become a Falcon and not a Patriot. Oh, I sure did. This is how you become a Falcon and not a Patriot. calling your own plays when God already has something working for you when God gave you the number one running back in the NFL when all you had to do was just go two steps across the line and win you decide to give the game away in your own strength a lot of people are giving their game away because they're walking in their own strength your business is not where it's supposed to be God didn't give you a business for you to barely get by. That's not how God moves. God gives you an abundance so you can hire people so they can feed their family. 
God get businesses so people don't walk in poverty. Because it's your job to pull people out of poverty. But a lot of us walk in our own strength and in selfishness because it's like, as long as I'm good, as long as my wife's good, the kid's good, I should be straight. That's not how God operates. Now you're moving in your strength. Your self-awareness, your self-reliance. You want your control. Your control is an illusion. Your control is an enemy's control to make you think that you're doing something when you really are not doing anything at all. But lose it. Why are you right at the goal line? And all you got to do is step forward and win. The game is already rigged for you to win. Christ died for you to win. to stop losing the body of Christ is losing everywhere we're losing in business we're losing in entertainment we're losing all seven pillars of the world education government business media entertainment arts we're losing everywhere Because we have adopted an illusion of control through religion as opposing a strength system through relationship. Successful teams have a relationship with each other. They don't just show up and build on a foundation or a doctrine. They actually deal with each other first one of the greatest things I saw was I was watching how the US Olympic team who lost went back to win they brought Kobe in Carmelo Anthony said we was out partying in our groove on we showed back up at the hotel at 345 in the morning he said, and we hear dun, dun, dun. Swish. He said, we hear dot, 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 swish. Bam, 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 swish. And he was like, what is that? He said, they go in the practice court, and Kobe Bryant is there at 3 o'clock in the morning. And he was like, this man looked like he had been in there for hours because he was drenched in sweat. Practice. You have to be prepared. Your opportunity is coming. Whether you want it or not, it either exposes you or it, or it calipos you. You will either be exposed for not practicing, not being ready, not being prepared. This is how we lose. We have no relationship with the Father. We play Christian. We're not in prayer. We're not in the Word. And we don't know God's will. We don't know what He wants for us. We think prosperity is a bad word, but it's all in this book. He said, I'll prosper you in my strength. Read this, and I'll make you successful. Walk with me and I'll be there with you. I will hold you with my right hand. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all this stuff that you're worrying about, bills, rent, car, clothes, shoes, children, husband, wife, all of that will be added on to you. Then you can be oh so delicious. You can stop running and you can stop being a sitting duck, but you can be one that knows how to trust, know the play call, know how to move, and know when it's time to run, and know when it's time to sit. Salvation is here. If you 
you would like to receive salvation because you can't give your life to Christ. You don't need it. He said, come and receive salvation. He wants to give you something. If you need prayer, if you This will be that time. Don't miss it. David did say, oh, come taste and see how sweet the Lord is. <clears throat> I can promise you it's sweet. to almost almost dying I tell anybody if God saved me God caught me in the midst of going to commit armed robbery and murder over in the car and all I can say was Jesus I was told that if I didn't call on that name well I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now because it was my time to go because of the choices that I made I was a real runner I wore Nikes for a living He can save me. Take me from addiction, drug addiction, sex addiction, to being a father who is fighting for a relationship with his children who now can't get them off the phone. So where we have Bible study together, where I was received a wife that will love me and understand me and push me. have a business that's functioning, moving. I beat three felonies. The last one would have sent me down the road 20 plus. Georgia wanted to charge me with kingpin charges. He can do that for me. And I can stand here now and give my testimony and preach the word. Oh, so delicious is he. He can do it for you. take communion so for those that are home that are watching even those that watch tomorrow on YouTube this is what you can do go find you some bread 
Give me some water, some juice. I'll wait. He said, do this as often as you remember me. When you partake in communion, you're actually partaking in an engagement to commit yourself as the bride to Christ. You can turn me down, Anton. So I'll still give you a little time for those who are looking for bread, wine, crackers, juice, whatever you have, chips ahoy. We still gonna bless it. I promise you those are sweeter than this. Ah. Thank you, Father. Before you take of this, make sure that your heart is good. If you're holding anything against anyone, I ask you to release them and to forgive them. If you're mad, frustrated, let it go. I also say that before you partake in this, Make sure that you are in right standing with God. You are in right standing with Christ. Paul said, let every man examine himself before he partake in this. Partaking in this in ill will. Partaking in this without being in forgiveness. Without having a clear conscience, clear mind, clear heart. And cause you to be sick it can even lead to death for this is sacred and this is holy our hearts and minds are clear Paul said that the night that Jesus was betrayed, he had given thanks. So, Father, we give you thanks for this bread. We ask that you bless it, Father. He broke it. He said, take, eat of this. For this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may eat. And in the same manner and likewise, he also took the cup, which he has sup saying this cup is the New Testament. This cup is the new covenant. In my blood, do this and drink as often as you remember me. You may drink. Ooh. So, Father, we thank you for communion. We thank you for the body that was broken for us, for our health, for our strength. And we thank you for the blood that led us into the new covenant that was shared for us, that we may be reconciled back to the Father. And all these things we ask of you in your son Jesus' name. 
Amen. Well, we hop. We thank y'all. If you'd like to follow us, you can go to vhop.org. That's V H O P P dot O R G. You can follow us online. You can also download the app. You also get sneak peeks of what the sermon's going to be before uh, they're given on Saturdays. Um, also, if you would like to sow into this ministry, you can do so by going to vhop.org forward slash giving. That's V H O P P dot O R G slash G I V I N G. Also, you can give via Zelle at info at vhop.org. We will have a PayPal next week. Uh, so, but right now you can give via Zelle or you can go online and give. If you have the app, you can go into the app. Big red button at the top says give. Click on that and you can give that way. Um, if you need prayer, you can email us, reach out to us. Um, we will pray for you. And for my people that is watching tomorrow on YouTube, all of this information is in the description box below. So, and we will see y'all back here next week on my daughter's birthday and the weekend of Mother's Day. So, and our pastor Shaquita Jackson will be led by the Lord next week to give a great message, I'm sure. So we'll see y'all. Same time, same back channel. We out.